Hi, hello everyone. This is Samia from Bookfish channel. Today I'm gonna review about the one act play titled The Dear Departed, which was written by William Stanley Hoxton. So these are the characters that have taken part in the play. And there are also few half screen characters that have enrolled only by the name. The Dear Departed, which is a one act play written by William Stanley Hockton. Coming to the author's introduction, he is an eminent playwright and most of his plays set locale in Northern England. But the thoughts and expressions are presented universally as the aspect of human nature. He was greatly influenced by Ibsen, Bernard Shaw and St. John Hankin. And he was also one of the best of a group of realistic playwrights who are often titled as the Manchester School. Coming to the play, The Dear Departed is a satire that criticizes the peripheral relationship and showy love between the parents, siblings and children. And this drama explains a clear satire and the degradation of moral values in the British middle class. The dialogues of the drama clearly epics and depicts the dramatic remarkable gift for dialogues. So the scene of the house is shown in the house which the middle class people live. And in while opening the screen, Mrs. Slater is lying on the table. Uh, her looks is very, uh, she's very healthy, red faced, and uh, but uh, she is very cheap and cruel minded lady. She is uh, very straightforward and she can do anything in cost of getting her own self benefit. She is wearing a black dress, which is a symbol of sorrowness, but still her heart in her mind talks about the things that has to be taken from his father's own. So she looks out of the window and calls her daughter Victoria and asks her to dress uh, in a black which is a symbol of uh, sorrowness because uh, she never wanted her daughter to play in the streets joyfully when uh, here her grandfather was passed away. And also she uh, ordered her uh, daughter Victoria to go and get ready before her aunt Elizabeth and her uncle Ben arrives. Victoria, she is a girl, small girl, so she raises up a question that why her aunt and uncle were coming as they had not visited them for past years and what is the reason behind it. And here Mrs. Slater gives an answer which shows her cheap mindedness. She says that they come here only to discuss the matters like uh, the property belongs to their father and the possession belongs to their father because now he's passed away and the things... Uh, of his uh, father should be uh, shared between the both daughters and that's the reason for her sister's arrival. So when her father that is uh, Abel Meriwether was passed away, uh, Mr. Slatter he sends them a telegram informing that their father was passed away and uh, both the Mr. and Mrs. Ben they arrived to the place. Mrs. Later, she quickly arrives to the door and she started uh, opening and viewing people in different manner and uh, she could also find that they were in white. Uh, before the Elizabeth's family coming, Mr. and Mrs. Later, they took away the most valuable things that they think has to be more valuable. Even they took the slippers uh, that belongs to Abel Marywitch. This showed half Slater is very cheap. And a girl of middle class wanted, uh, had a love and crush for the property of their parents. And also she says that, here you would better wear these slippers of my grandfather's now. It's lucky you had just got a new pair. And suddenly Mrs. Slater thinks about uh, the desk which is present in her father's room. And already she had an idea that she would have taken that if her father, father was passed away. Now he is dead, so she wishes to take that and uh, she takes that uh, desk and the bureau to the another room. She shifts that to another room and tells her sister that it was given by Abel Marywitch when he was alive to Mrs. Slater. And also she teaches certain uh, tricks to Mr. Slater that her sister Elizabeth was very sharp and she would find all the things that she had done. And if she had an attraction towards a thing, she will be arguing for that till the end. To till up to the lease, so she commented that uh, Elizabeth was dishonest and greedy for money. So uh, she always wanted everything, most of the property of her father's to be hers, and the plans according to that. And also she had a plan uh, that when the desk was bought, Elizabeth had not visited the home so far. 
so if it is uh, placed in another room or if it is placed in the downstairs elizabeth could not be seen that and she will not be arguing for that where is the character mr slatter he himself says that uh, you are exceeding your limits this is not the right way to do but mrs slatter she uh, she is a lady who always wanted only herself to be benefited and she can cross up to the limit she can go up to the least the little young child uh, questions rise up the question that uh, then uh, why are we stealing the bureau without grandfather's permission before her aunt uh, elizabeth arrived she wants to rise up a question in the way that are we not doing the wrong are we in the right way so the little kid can understand but uh, this shows the human kind whereas a kid when one is in a kid uh, one is in a childhood they automatically realize the good and bad but when they grow up the materialistic life uh, make them to be have a quest only for the materialistic life and materialistic property not the loved young parents so now finally her sister mrs jordan and her husband mr jordan arrives and they had a kid uh, named jimmy they started uh, discussing about the death where uh, mrs slater says that yeah he's dead and uh, he was uh, 72 years and 15 days the last sunday and this made both the sisters cry but it is uh, just a kind of crocodile cry here ben uh, the husband of uh, elizabeth puts up a sentence that everyone must die one day so there is nothing to cry in it now the question uh, takes to the medical field where elizabeth questions did doctor gave any suggestion or uh, did you consult doctor and uh, mrs slater she is even greedy she never wanted to waste money in that and she says that uh, the condition matters the condition never allowed her to meet her family doctor who is named dr prinkle and she assures confirmly that he had passed away so we should keep in mind that uh, she took the clock old american clock the bureau the slippers and the desk to another room and uh, in order to make it to herself both uh, both the daughters instead of uh, feeling for the death of the old man they started feeling that he never paid his pre- uh, premium and it was left and it had to be paid by themselves and uh, meanwhile mrs slatter inch by inch she brings up the thought that uh, able mary which he loved uh, victoria than jimmy so he had uh, more love for victoria and he offers many things than jimmy to victoria in the meanwhile during their conversation they come each other come to know that uh, their grandfather is going to ring off bells often and uh, he is paying his insurance in his office instead of paying it in the office he goes to the ringo bell and he pays it there and uh, now they fight for each and everything to be shared between them now uh, they wanted to see all the list of premiums so victoria was ordered to go and bring the keys when she go uh, when she runs up stairs to his grandfather room sorry to her grandfather room to bring up the keys suddenly she shouts that shout made all the four put the matter more worse when they were out of the shock the uh, old man came down from the upstairs and he told them that he had a headache and that's the reason he was bit dashed and this made each and every one get shocked it was here during the discussion that he had noticed that his clock his bureau everything were in henry's room that is mr slater's room and uh, even the slippers were owned by mr slater he became annoyed and asked for the reason then uh, mrs jordan informed him that mrs slater was perhaps uh, she is deceiving everybody by trying to steal the clock bureau and everything before she arrives then the old man puts up a question what's the reason for your arrival yes then uh, both of them they tell something uh, they try to hide the fact but finally when the old man uh, come up to the dress code he finds that it is because a uh, death matter so when he puts up the question both the sisters in their argument they start saying that uh, she thought you were dead and she took away this thing whereas uh, she states that no no she thought you are dead and she has taken everything this made the old man really get uh, very depressed and at the same moment angry so he reveals the fact that uh, he is a great burden for both his, uh, both his daughters and the person who takes care of them one who really loved him and one who feels it pleasure to be with him to take care of him will be the owner of all his property so suddenly the Uh, they brushed a great war between the two sisters both fight that uh, he will be with me and the other says that no he wants us to be with me the other says no 3 months he was with you so now he'll be with me so the fight starts going on 
in the middle uh, there was a great show given by uh, mr abel where he says he was planning to make three uh, things happen and they are listed as i'll go i'll tell you what i have got to do on monday next i have to go to three things i have got to go to the lawyer and alter my will so he wanted to go to the lawyer and change his will the what is the changing seems to be is he wanted the person one who cares for him to be benefited for his old property and i have got to go to the insurance office and pay my premium so he wanted to go to the insurance office to pay his premium i have got to go to san philippines church and get married so the old man finally wanted to marry and he is going to get married in san uh, uh, sorry san philips church and when they puts up the question whom do you want to marry the old man says that uh, mrs john sherlock who keeps uh, ringo bells near him i mean near his house he says that he going to be married on monday 12 o'clock at st philippians church so opening his door he gets out and he says that uh, he thanks mrs later for bringing uh, bringing the bureau down because it's very harder uh, for him to take it across the ringo bells on monday finally concludes that he goes outside the both the daughters they felt sorry and they apologized him but he never uh, took it to his ears he invited both his daughters to attend the marriage and he left so the main theme of the dear departed was to bring out of the materialistic attitude of children it uh, focuses only on the greed of children who are more interested in inheriting a lion's share for their parents property but also for his welfare they never cared for him or for his welfare they only wanted him themselves to be benefited they show no feelings towards their elder who in turn feel cut off from life and they think their parents as their burden children behave as an irresponsible impre- manner and they do not have any interest or respect for their parents they have uh, they have become a self centered but uh, one must realize that greed is never uh, satisfied or it is not the complete way of life it is love which teaches you to be given and to be selfless and to be taken so the main uh, theme of the play is to love your parents and the human beings than the materialistic one so that's the video if you have any doubts please to ask me for further comments i'll press it thank you